brother, man, they gave my boy Tory Lanez 10 years, man. They gave my boy Tory a 10 stack, a fucking 10 stack. I'm pretty shocked. I'm not going to lie. I probably shouldn't be. If you do kind of like take a step back and analyze things, they did make it very clear that they wanted to make an example out of Tory Lanez. Um, the fact that, you know, even if you don't believe he did it and you think it's all lies and shit, on paper, he did shoot a fucking black woman. In 2023 and onwards, it's just not going to run, especially in a place like LA, especially with her being super high profile. It was always going to end one way. Um, so it's not too surprising that he did get jail time, obviously, sorry, prison time. It's just surprising the number. I thought he would have got, I was thinking he would have got like five, five or six is what I was thinking. Then with time served, he would have probably did four years, you know, like that was what I was thinking he'd probably end up getting. But 10 years for shooting, not directly into somebody's foot, but around their foot is fucking crazy for me. Like, that doesn't make any sense, especially when you think about the, the, the amount of years people get for killing somebody while they're fucking driving drunk, right? DUI, fucking whatever it may be. And it's I think it's called vellicu vellicular fucking um, manslaughter or whatever it may be, or murder. And they don't get as much time. So that's crazy. So 10 years is a bit wild for me in that regard. But hey, it kind of is what it is. And I guess in some case, it does put a little bit of closure on the whole series of events that happened right we now know that it's kind of all done it's all kind of over there's not much more to kind of go on in this and we kind of have to move on but i don't know i I've, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens going forward because I, I read some other bits and pieces online about the whole case and i saw that megan the stallion sent a letter to the judge because she didn't want to appear there and give a statement so she sent a letter that was read out by her lawyer and in a letter bro like you could feel the hate that she has for fucking Tory in that letter. You could feel how much she dislikes this man. Like, she fucking hates him. And the contrast is odd because Tory then got a chance to speak in court and he was saying that how he still thinks Megan's his friend. Like, legit, he was still saying in court as he was, you know, before his sentence got read, he was saying, yeah, he still counts Megan as a friend. He regrets everything that he did. Um, on the night, he didn't basically admit he'd shot her, but he just basically said he regrets the events that led up to it. He shouldn't have said what he said in terms of revealing the secrets that he was smashing both Megan and Kelsey at the time. But he essentially still was, you know, he spoke with some sort of like love in his heart for fucking Megan the Stallion. But then when Megan read the letter to the judge, bro, she was basically sounded like, hey, I want this guy to get the fucking most sentence possible because he has not, I think that the, the line that was used in her letter to a judge was that Megan said she hasn't had a day of peace since that event happened. Um, and it's fucking crazy because even to this day, we don't know what actually occurred because there's, there was no DNA of Tories on the gun. Kelsey took that plea deal. Um, loads of other messed up for gazes shit happened. We don't actually know who actually shot fucking Megan. And even the shot Megan thing, we don't actually know if she actually got that shot directly in the foot because it said there was fragments of stuff in her foot, but not frag bullet fragments. All this sort of madness stuff. It was it's kind of inconclusive to this day. Obviously, we know they were all there, Kelsey, Tori, and Megan, but to this day we don't know. So the fact that he got sentenced to ten years for a crime that a lot of people can't actually agree on who did it is a bit wild. We all know that Megan was a victim in in this case, but the fact that we don't know who did it is the thing that's really kind of boggling my mind in terms of it getting to a point where he has to serve 10 years for it. It's fucking insane. But it should be, I feel like, a warning and a heads up to all men out there, especially men, when dealing with women. You just have to keep your composure at all times because one mistake, one horny like crazy night where you know his world was just on fire right just imagine tory you know um quarantine radio time his star is never brighter he's now in rooms that he probably was never in before he now suddenly ends up at kylie jenner's house kylie jenner's giving him the eye uh, giving him the eyes in the pool at the same time he does you know no one else knows in the house that he's smashing both megan and her friend kelsey even her friends don't know he's fucking sh sh smashing megan and kelsey and in that moment he feels like he can do everything he thought he could probably pull Kay kylie too in the pool that then pisses off megan who then you know decides to storm off and that then leads them all to leave the house together and then that's what then leads to the shooting but i think 
for as much blame as some people who love Tory are putting on Megan, I still think the responsibility lay to the feet of Tory. If Tory just would have kept his composure and just chilled and enjoyed the kickback that he had at Kylie's house for what it was, had some drinks, drunk some 1942, had a couple of tacos and shit, busted some jokes, got some pictures off for the gram, he would have been a fuck, he would have gone down being a king because those pictures would have hit the internet of little Tory in between Megan, Kylie and Kelsey and he would look like a fucking king. He did too much. He did too much. And in the end, he paid the ultimate price. Don't get me wrong. Does anybody, you know, sh should men go to prison for 10 years for being horny? Probably not, <laughs> right? But I feel like being too horny is what led him to this position, in my opinion. And then when it got to a point of them doing the back and forths and, you know, you can't tell anybody how to feel if they get disrespected. So I feel like Megan felt like Tory was antagonizing her online, even though I think they were both as bad as each other. They were both kind of going back and forth on social media because no one, you know, no one wants to be looked at as a fucking woman shooter, right? That like no one wants to do that in, in, in any way, shape, or form, especially a dude. But no woman also wants to be called a liar because Megan was getting it. So I feel I, I, I sympathize with Megan because she was fucking getting fucking abused online. Um, Tory was getting abused online so they both tried to kind of play out in the court of public opinion but it looks like judging from what the judge also said because I feel like some comments have been attributed to the judge he said something at the end like Tory's lack of remorse and the fact that he was going back and forth with Megan online or in the words I think of the judge he said antagonizing her is what led to the harsher sentence like he showed no remorse but you know if you're a Tory supporter you're like how can he show remorse if he didn't do the crime? You know, it's like he didn't do it. So how can he be remorse for something he didn't do? But in general, they all they both did too much. And in the end, it cost them both a lot of time because I'm still not too sure. I heard academics speak about it. He said, oh, it's not over for, for Megan. I don't think it's actually green for Megan either. It's not all sun sunshine and rainbows either for her because I feel like this, this, isn't gonna, this cloud isn't going to leave her anytime soon. In the same way that the whole Chris Brown and Rihanna thing is never going to go away from them as part of their history until the day that they die, I think this is probably going to be far worse for both parties included. I think they're both not going to be able to shake this dark cloud over them. Um, the fact that they had to kind of, you know, go through this fucking whole affair. So even though Megan got the outcome that she wanted, I don't think it's actually going to be all strong and rabies for her career. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to still have a lot of questions and it's still going to be one of those things that's going to be lingering on top. Unless she obviously comes out with music that's completely undeniable, people are going to just shut up and move on. But it's just going to be a topic of conversation forever. And ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So, you know, it kind of is what it is. 10 years for Tory is fucking nuts, to be fair. Like I said, even if you think he's guilty, I think 10 years for, you know, whatever he whatever happened there is just nuts. But it kind of is what it is. And he has a hell of a fight on his hands now. Um, I think his lawyers are going to put in an appeal. But again, sometimes, I don't know, maybe he's going to have a sleep and think to himself, you know what, do I, do I want to go through this whole drama again? Drag my family through court, spend loads of money. Um, all this like pick my life apart to go for the trial or just take my time like a man and just sit it down and kind of go there who knows um, and then again as a fan of music and as a fan of chaos I'm also eager to see how t Megan navigates her career now like what do you do now do you just like drop music and act like it never happened do you do one final public interview and kind of answer all the lingering questions and go from there what do you actually do you know what's an actual next step because i think it's very telling that there hasn't been a lot of celebrities out there kind of clamoring to say congratulations to her you know what i mean i think it's very telling because i think a lot of them probably are you know don't really know what happened or some of them believe tori didn't do it like i think it's very telling so far because the industry is full of fucking spineless fake people who just kind of go with the wind and also kind of protect their own interests but i feel like the the lack of people who have come out you know, in support of Megan is very, very telling, in my opinion. Very, very telling. So let's see what happens. Let's see what goes on. What are you guys saying in the chat about this whole subject? Um, let me quickly scroll up and see what you're saying. 10 years is crazy. Yeah, I agree. At least he can grow taller in prison. Ted, you, you're a fucking animal. Um, Jordan Ray says, Tori's sketch is hilarious. He doesn't even look like him. Yeah, exactly. Um, a day of peace from what? Exactly 730. Um, how would the jury find him guilty with no evidence? Yeah, I think it's just, I think it's your American legal system. I think it's probably the same in the UK. It's just, um, what you call it? 
I guess they had to come to a conclusion as who was most likely, who most likely did it. And I guess they said most likely it was fucking Tory because they couldn't convict Kelsey because Kelsey, the other girl that was there, she pulled us. She actually is the smartest person out of this whole thing. Like no one kind of knew and everyone kind of discounted her and kind of underestimated her. But she somehow managed to, you know, negotiate a plea deal for herself, which basically gave her immunity from prosecution. And she was able to give evidence, go on the stand, but also she wasn't liable to be prosecuted for the shooting which was fucking incredible. So she got away with it completely scot-free. So big up Kelsey for pulling that fast one. Scott, Cast um, sorry, Stephen Castaneda says, happened after a party at Kylie Jenner's house, but she never had to testify. Exactly, yeah, yeah. To be fair, she never testified because it was just the location of the house. I don't think the party played any part in what happened in the car. Even though it resulted in them leaving, you know, it didn't play a part. The funny story about that Kylie thing, if you don't know, the actual, the kind of on the ground goss, if you guys don't know, is that, what happened is that obviously as i mentioned before the part of the story of um kylie giving tori some flirtatious looks in, in the pool but the story is basically something along the lines of um who invited who i don't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter details somehow they will end up no sorry megan yeah so uh, big up stingu thank you for a super chat can we trade Bob before Tori? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Stingu, for the super chat. I appreciate you. Hey. Uh, to be fair, I wouldn't wish prison on fucking Brendan. He's a redact and he puts out bad comedy specials and, you know, he's a bit of a douche, but I wouldn't wish prison on him at all. No way, shape or form. Um, but going back to this thing, what happened actually was that was really funny was that I'm pretty sure the story goes Megan and Kelsey were at the party with Kylie themselves, two girls, right? Then later on down the line, Megan then invites Tori to come and join her and Kelsey and Kylie at Kylie's house. Tori arrives, and I think when Tori arrives, um, Kelsey, the other girl that he's fucking behind Megan's back, they're two best friends, but they don't know they're both by fucking Tori. She's a bit drunk and she's sleeping, she goes to sleep. <clears throat> so then it ends up being just like Tori and Megan and Kylie in the room or in a pool somewhere hanging out. And I guess in that instance is when they start being flirty. But then in that instance is also when Megan and Kylie have some sort of friction. I think they said it was about food or something. Something happened where Megan and Kylie had some sort of friction. Then Kelsey joins in and kind of, you know, she's the one that kind of gets Kylie likes the most and then they kind of get back to being cool. Then they get into an argument <clears throat> because I guess Megan sees Kylie and Tori flirting. She storms out and gets angry and they get into some sort of argument. Kylie's like, look, I don't want none of that fucking ratchetness in my house you have to you all have to leave and then they all leave that's kind of what is actually happened so the Tory thing is way sadder because he wasn't even he wasn't actually there like he got invited there by the girls and then one of the girls end up you know he ends up getting into a tete-a-tete -tete with and then for some reason i don't know why he did that i think this is another reason why i don't agree with boys or men being in women's business i feel like men should stay out women's business in you know as much as you can as possible like stay out women's business try and be a gentleman when you're dating women as much as much as much as you can try and be a gentleman uh treat women with respect take them out on dates um if it's a one time and if it's one time and done make it an enjoyable experience because clearly we've seen if you do piss off a woman she can legitimately ruin your life like for real for real and i think that for the most part there's a lot of guys out there that also play into that like, they like the danger of having a woman kind of like you know that's hating them and wishes bad on them and i don't want that kind of energy out there i wouldn't want that and i feel like personally tory did a bit too much when he then got in a car and then they go into an argument and for some reason he thought it was it was a smart decision a smart tactic to air out everyone's business and say oh you don't even know that i'm fucking your friend wherever he's in the car and then that caused the argument and the fight between kelsey and Me megan the stallion which then led to a shooting um because i think some people are hypothesizing that megan obviously because she's fucking huge right she was beating up Kelsey really bad. She kind of ripped her chain, punched her in the face and shit a few times. And then Kelsey was obviously losing the fight. And then she got frustrated losing the fight. And she ran over to the front of the car to grab the gun. But that's where Tori was sitting. And then her and Tori, her, Kelsey and Tori go into a scuffle with the gun. And that's when the gun went off. That's what people say is, is what happened. So it wasn't like Tori actually got the gun and shot Megan. It was more so Kelsey grabbed the gun to go and shoot Megan because Megan was 
fucking her up. But obviously, because Tori cares for Megan, he didn't want Kelsey to shoot her, so he was wrestling with a gun, and the gun accidentally went off. That's what they're saying. But again, I'm I'm a guy who believes in you know, um, what's that thing called? Um, radical fucking personal responsibility, if that is a term. And I'm always going to be someone that's going to say, hey, if I was, if I have an ability to control a situation within my power, I'm going to do so. And I feel like Tori just relinquished that control because his dick was hard. Um, that's what happened, basically, in my opinion. I think in, when you roll, when you kind of get down to the bare crux of it, he was too horny and he paid the ultimate price of being too horny. The ultimate fucking price. 